Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 282, The Messengers of the Sealing of the Set Apart Ones. The podcast objectives are analyze the great peril of the false prophet, analyze how the day of salvation is coming to an end, reveal the only way to navigate from season to season in these last days, analyze how each unique season has a unique message, analyze how many are getting off track in these last days, and reveal how we know it is the last hour. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. Many false prophets are in the world. Now, in the most recent podcast, we analyzed the times and seasons of the ceiling of these set apart ones. And we came to see how this season began in 2020 CE, as our world was hit with a host of crises, clearly indicating the sifting of the nations has drawn near. In coming to this spirit-led conclusion, we have now fulfilled four of the seven guidelines on every word of prophecy. We have fulfilled the people the places, the times, and the seasons of the sealing of these set apart ones. From now, we must fulfill the final three guidelines to confirm the sealing of the set apart ones is in fact one of the seven seasons in these last days. Expressly, we must fulfill the guidelines of the messenger, the sequence, and the purpose. Per the title of this podcast, it should be clear that we will be addressing the fourth guideline next. That is, the guideline of the messenger, the focal guideline of every word of prophecy. If you recall, a messenger is one who has been delegated to prophesy what will happen. This is precisely why the messenger is the focal guideline. For how can one receive a word of prophecy without a messenger? Romans 10, 14 through 15 is revealing. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without one proclaiming? And how shall they proclaim if they are not sent? As it has been written, how pleasant are the feet of those who bring the good news of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. This passage not only validates the role of the messenger in proclaiming the word of truth, but it also establishes the fundamental requirement of a messenger. That is, they must be sent. They must have received a delegation from Elohim. Here lies the problem, and a sore evil we have witnessed in these last days, specifically in the Restoration Movement. And seeing as it has done, Great damage within the extended nation, I will offer it as an inflection point. Many of the so-called 
restoration messengers were not sent, i.e., they did not receive a delegation from the Most High Elohim to preach or teach the restoration message. Now, if you are familiar with the history of our nation, then you are neither bemused nor taken aback by this reality. As a matter of fact, you were likely expecting it. I know I was, for it has been written, the thing that was shall be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. Jeremiah 23, 16 to 22 reads, Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They lead you astray. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of Yahuwah. They keep on saying to those who despise me, Yahuwah has said, you shall have peace. And to all who walk according to the stubbornness of their own heart, they say, no evil comes upon you. I did not send these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have let my people hear my words, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. This passage confirms the presence of false prophets within the nation past and present, prophets who refused to stand in the counsel of Yahuwah Elohim, prophets who are consistently leading his people astray, and prophets he clearly did not send. Now, the question of the hour then is, who sent these false prophets? The answer is sure. They were sent by the enemy. They are men and women of the synagogue of Satan. Here again, if you are being led by the Spirit, this is not late breaking news. For the full duration of the restoration movement, we have witnessed a host of false prophets mishandling and vilifying the restoration message. I'm not going to waste my time talking about these individuals now. The same way I didn't waste my time listening to anything they had to say then. I'm only mentioning this phenomenon as a matter of spiritual fact and to provide you with the following warning. As it was with the former nation, a depressing fate has befallen the renewed nation of Israel. Alas, there are exponentially more false prophets associated with the restoration movement than there are free prophets. Therefore, I advise you to listen to the word to us that was given by John, who is declaring, beloved ones, do not believe every spirit, but prove the spirits, whether they are of Elohim, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The Conclusion of the Day of Salvation Now, seeing as we have not been led to focus on all the false prophets within the extended nation, we are going to focus on the free prophets, the true messengers Elohim has raised up to prophesy on his behalf in this season of sealing. I will begin with a self-submission, to wit, I am a messenger of the sealing of these set apart ones. Elohim has specifically called me to minister during this season. This is a large reason why he has called me to insert an impromptu phase in this podcast ministry dedicated to analyzing the 80 degrees of lawlessness, 
For it is impossible to obtain the seal of Elohim if you are operating in any of these degrees. It's a classic non-starter. As it pertains to my delegation, Yahuwah didn't give me this message yesterday. He didn't give it to me last year. He didn't even give it to me within the last decade. My dear friends, Yahuwah gave me this message before the restoration even started and before I even knew what it was. This is one of the reasons why I know it came from him. For lo, 25 years ago, he began imparting the message of the ceiling to me as a teenager. And now, 25 years later, I am thoroughly furnished to execute a good work. Now, these things being what they are, it should be clear to one and all what the true messengers of the ceiling look like. And the message we are declaring should be very clear. And yet, if you are unsure, listen to what I say here. The message of the ceiling is the message of the end. It is a final call to all who desire to be in the renewed nation of Israel before the day of salvation comes to a swift and decisive end. Now, it may appear to be contradictory to suggest the message of the ceiling is the message of the end, considering how the ceiling is only the second of the seven seasons in these last days. So, how do we account for this discrepancy? As in all matters of truth, we should search the scriptures, and in doing so, we will find one of the most prominent end times passages, words spoken by our loving master, Yahushua Messiah. An enduring message we considered at the beginning of this end time series. Matthew 24, 37 through 39 reads, And as the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the son of Adam be. For as they were in the days before the flood, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also shall the coming of the son of Adam be. Now, the critical line in this passage reveals they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Seeing how these last days will be as the days of Noah, we can make the following conclusion, which I will offer as a revelation. If you do not remember anything else about the message of the ceiling, I advise you to remember this. The day that Noah entered the ark is symbolic of the ceiling of the set apart ones. On this wise, the ark is a types and shadow of the seal. For the same way the ark protected Noah from the flood, the seal will protect us during the great distress. Here lies the inflection vis-a-vis -vis the flood is a type and shadow of the great distress, which will be coming in the upcoming season. Alas, the flood is just around the corner, and the opportunity to enter the ark is fading away. And this, my friends, is why the message of the ceiling is the message of the end, for it will mark the conclusion of the day of salvation. And this conclusion is essentially the equivalence of Yahuwah closing the door to the ark 
It is the moment when no one else can be saved. The only way to cross the bridge. Now, these things being what they surely are, you must appreciate how the message of the ceiling is not the restoration message. This should be plain to see. First and foremost, because the ceiling and the restoration are two different seasons in these last days. Along these lines, we have already established the sequential nature of seasons. And thus, we understand the restoration of the nation was designed to prepare us for the ceiling. The same way the ceiling is designed to prepare us for the sifting of the nations. This should be clear to see by the timeline below. To wit, each unique season has a unique message. And the focus of each message is designed to prepare you to have success in the ensuing season. Now, if you recall, we analyzed this development earlier in this phase as we shared the model of the bridge of confirmation. In those podcasts, we came to see how there is a bridge that connects each season in these last days. And the only way to cross the bridge is to fulfill the message the Spirit is revealing in the current season. Along these lines, the bridge of confirmation in this season is centered on our fulfillment of all the requirements upon the seal of Elohim. And all who succeed will obtain safe passage into the sifting of the nations as our world enters the time of the great distress. A message for every season. Now, here again, this is why the restoration message is not the message of the ceiling. And if you would receive it, the restoration message as it pertains to the current season is obsolete, i.e. it has no enduring value outside of its foundational relationship with the message of the ceiling. This shouldn't be too difficult to understand if you, by the Spirit, perceive how the ceiling the set-apart ones is coming to an end. Likewise, it's a fairly simple truth to follow if you consider the physical model of seasons. Look, each message in each season in these last days is like a set of clothing. Ergo, the restoration message is symbolic of a set of clothing associated with the season of restoration. For an example, we should equate the restoration to summer. In this same example, the ceiling of the set apart ones would be equated to the fall. And the sifting of the nations, which follows the ceiling, would be equated to winter. Simple enough. Now, here's the question. Do you keep your summer clothes in easy reach with the intent of wearing them when you are preparing for winter? The answer is no. We typically store our summer clothes as we prepare for winter because they are not needed. Lo, this is the case for the restoration message, for that season has ended. And although this fact does not diminish the restoration message, it is evidence that the Spirit is speaking a different message in this season. Without controversy, this message is aligned with the ceiling of these set-apart ones, and it is focused on preparing us for the sifting of the nations 
which will follow. And this, my friends, is what I have been teaching exclusively for the full duration of this calendar year. Now, these things being what they are, I would provide a warning against those messengers who are still preaching the restoration message exclusively without any mention of or correlation to the sealing of these set apart ones. I ask you to consider it carefully. Seeing as we have progressed deep into the season of sealing, anyone who is still preaching the restoration message and only the restoration message does not have a delegation. They have not been spiritually licensed by Elohim to prophesy in this season. And thus, they are not equipped to prepare anyone for the great distress that is just ahead. And this is one of the more prominent models of the false prophet we have witnessed in these last days. They got off track. Now, the sum of these matters are, no doubt, controversial. Not because the order of Elohim is convoluted, or difficult to understand. Quite the contrary, the controversy lies in the abundance of false prophets within the restoration movement. Remember the warning John gave us when he said, many false prophets have gone out into the world. In 2 John 1.7, John refers to these false prophets as deceivers and anti-messiahs, i.e., men and women who are operating outside of the order of Elohim. We know this because Yahuwah would not lead his messengers to preach a message that does not have the power to save his people in the current season. Quite the contrary, this is the work of Satan, and here is how we know. As a cunning adversary, Satan is not wasting his time trying to deceive the extended nation of Israel with doctrines unrelated to our heritage or collective understanding of restoration. Quite the contrary, the primary way Satan is deceiving many within the extended nation of Israel is by taking the truth out of context, which on this wise is displacing the truth of the restoration message in a season in which it is no longer the focus. Look, here again, this is not a new thing. This is Satanic Errors and Lies 101. Vis a vis, Satan has always worked to corrupt the truth by raising up an army of false prophets who are masters at deceiving the simple-minded and the slothful. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15 reads, For such are false emissaries, deceptive workers, masquerading as emissaries of Messiah. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, as uncomplicated as this message is, you must appreciate the multiple layers of deception Shaul is addressing in this pivotal passage. To wit, he specifically uses the phrase deceptive workers when referring to these false emissaries, i.e. prophets. Here lies the inflection and one of the greatest tragedies we have witnessed in these last days, specifically within the extended nation of Israel. Please consider it carefully 
and beware of the false prophets in our midst. Shaul is not referring to false prophets who have crept in unawares, as Jude does in his letter to the assemblies. On the contrary, Shaul is referring to false prophets who were with us from the start. But like many who came before us, they got off track. To be clear, I am referring to men and women who were called to preach the restoration message. And yet, in the sure course of time, they became servants of Satan who are now masquerading around as servants of righteousness. Why we know it is the last hour. Now, the question many are likely asking is, how did these restoration preachers become servants of Satan? The answer is as simple as it is sure. For whatever reason, they failed to practice what they preached. As we mentioned in a prior podcast, these false prophets may have been well-versed with the content of the restoration message, but they were unwilling to fulfill the intent. They were disinclined to become doers of the word they were preaching, proving they cared more about themselves than the people they were supposed to be reaching. Look, this is why Shaul refers to them as deceptive workers. In doing so, he is acknowledging that these false prophets were given a delegation. They had a commission, or he would not have referred to them as workers. Not only this, but the specific literature characterizing the work is so powerful and telling, the Spirit has led me to offer it to you as a revelation. I call upon you to receive it with all meekness and humility. The ABP confirms that the term workers in this context is defined by those whose works qualify them as perpetrators. Here lies the power of Shaul's warning. Vis-a-vis, -vis, he not only confirms that these false prophets were once called, he also describes their works as criminal. This is aligned with the definition of a perpetrator, i.e., someone who has committed a crime or a harmful act. Now, the question is, what crime did these false prophets commit? The answer, there are honestly too many to tell. And yet, every crime they committed stems from one source. Enter lawlessness. On this wise, these false prophets refused to follow the restoration message they were commissioned to preach. Whether they profaned the Shabbat or became adulterers in their hearts or became murderers with their tongues, these defectors refused and or neglected to guard the commands of Elohim. This is precisely why Shaul refers to them as perpetrators, for they are lawbreakers. Not only this, but they are also hypocrites because they know what they are doing is wrong, and they are fools for believing they will somehow get away with it in the end. Not only this, but their crimes persist. Alas, the damage they are doing to the extended nation continues, for they have not resigned their positions. They have not confessed their sins. Neither have they addressed the real issue, which is lawlessness, and a key component of the message of the sealing. My dear friends, these false prophets are still in our midst, 
And as I said before, many of them are still preaching a tainted version of the restoration message or some other false and or irrelevant doctrine as a testament that they are not being led by the Spirit. We know this because lawlessness is the source of every weapon Satan has formed against us. To wit, every spiritual virus, disease, and infection within the sphere of man can be traced to one of the 80 degrees of lawlessness. Now, the question you should be asking is, would Satan license his false prophets to preach against his secret weapon, the source of all his power and strength? The answer, of course not, which is why I and all the free prophets like me are teaching against lawlessness. And the truth is, I am very anxious to get started because I know how powerful this next phase will be. I would go as far as to say, I can't wait. We began teaching on the 80 degrees of lawlessness. And yet, I must wait. I will wait. And that will make the experience even more fulfilling. For now, it is important for you to receive this word of truth concerning the messengers of the ceiling. This is not some shallow attempt to elevate the message of the ceiling above the restoration message. For this we know, there would be no ceiling of these set apart ones if there were no restoration message to birth the renewed nation of Israel. And so we give all praises to the Most High Yahuwah for the restoration message, for we cannot be saved without it. The point I am trying to make in this podcast is centered on the reality that we have transitioned from the season of restoration to the season of sealing. And thus, the message Elohim has for the nation has evolved. And it is designed to ensure you are ready for the seasons which are yet to come. Now, on that note, I will leave you with another powerful warning concerning the false prophets in our midst. We may live in an inverse reality in these last days, yet in line with the parable of the wheat and the tares, you must come to see how the extended nation of Israel was fated to be defined by false prophets and by prophets who are free. 1 John 2, 18-19 is revealing. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that anti-Messiah is coming, even now, many anti-Messiahs have come. This is how we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have stayed with us. But they went out in order that it might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Now, here is the final word. There's not much time left on the clock. So, TikTok, my friends, TikTok. If you're being led by the Spirit, you've no need for me to re rehearse the lateness of the hour. Neither do you need for me to remind you of what is at stake. I'm quite sure you are excited and ready to move on to the next phase, for in it, we will validate your attainment of the seal of Elohim and your preparedness to endure the great distress that is coming. And I cannot stress this enough. The great distress is coming. And thus, if you are not prepared, 
but you hear the voice of the Spirit speaking to you. Now is not the time to be halted between two opinions. Neither is it a time for practice. My dear friends, now is the time to act. For we were made for this moment. Brothers and sisters, we were reserved for this final hour. And thus, we will analyze every degree of lawlessness and trade each one for spiritual power. Now, here is what's next. We can play today's podcast, Ink Times 282, The Messengers of the Ceiling of the Set Apart Ones. And the next podcast is entitled, End Times 284, The Sequence of the Ceiling of the Set Apart Ones, Part 1. I will post this podcast on Monday, May 27th, 2024. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the spirit of Elohim, continue to watch, continue to pray, continue in fasting, and most of all, continue to be focused, for the end is coming, the end is near. Thank you.